Okay, this is the third lecture of our chapter seven, looking at, I and mean, here we're going to be looking at quantum mechanics and the atom. And we looked at first at the wave nature of light, we looked at the particle nature of light. And what we're going to look at next is, is, is the results of, a, of, of some, some experiments and, and theory by a scientist named de Broglie, which said, okay, if, if light rays have particle properties, meaning we have a photon, then, and, 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 and so, so light rays have particle properties. We can think of them as being sometimes uh, a wave, sometimes a particle. Do particles, particles should exhibit wave-like properties. Okay. And, and so, so if light rays exhibit particle, have particle properties, meaning, meaning the, 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 the electromagnetic radiation that we can think of as traveling as a wave, can, we can also think of them as being photons. Then particles uh, should exhibit wave-like properties. And, and, and it turns out that this, this theory and this and, and is borne out by experiment. Particles do have wave-like properties. And it's related like this. So we can think of a particle or something having a wavelength is being able to do Planck's constant over the momentum of the particle. Okay, so, so just re recall momentum um, momentum is just mass times of a particle times velocity, okay, um, and and so so the the Planck's constant over the momentum of the particle is going to give you the wavelength. So we could ask ourselves, um, um, well let's let's first let's well actually let's do something here. Let's do an example first. Um, so so let's look at an example. What's the wavelength? associated with an electron traveling at 2.19 times 10 to the 6 meters per second. Okay, well we can use the de Broglie equation and this is an equation that you should probably just know and memorize. Um, uh, so we have the wavelength Planck's constant or the mass times the velocity. Um, Planck's constant is a constant that's given to you, although in principle you probably should do enough problems to know, make it so that you, you, you have it memorized. 6.63 times 10 to the minus 34 joule seconds divided by the mass of an electron, which you can find in the back of your book looking it up. Um, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms and the velocity at this in this particular case was given to us 10 to the sixth meters per second now something to keep in mind when you're doing problems with this equation um, we have units of joules here kilograms meters squared per second squared so we have to make sure our mass is in kilograms and our velocity is in meters per second otherwise the units will be off and you'll be off by some factor of a thousand probably Okay, so so don't put, don't use grams or or centimeters for whatever else. Make sure you're using the correct units. In this case, we'd end up putting this into our calculator: three point three two times ten to the minus ten meters, or another way to put it would be three hundred thirty two picometers. Okay, so so here we have. And let's let's take a moment and think about this 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 rather fantastic. Um, uh, assertion that that all particles exhibit wave-like properties. Why wouldn't we experience this in a daily basis, right? So, for example, um, 
uh, why 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 wouldn't yeah why wouldn't we see um, a a sort for example a, a pencil or a chair or something like that having wave-like properties well let's think about the equation here so in order to make it so that the wavelength is large enough to be able to be noticed we need very that we need very tiny masses or very very fast velocities or in this case it was both when we have both tiny masses and very high velocities we have wavelengths which are large enough to be able to be experimentally seen one could experimentally see probably a, a wavelength of, of about 300 picometers or so We've experimentally determine that but if we have a very tiny a small mass so for example a chair is going to have a very small mass with a with and a um, and a, a, a very tiny speed we wouldn't notice the wavelength the, the wavelength is going to be so small as to make it so that we can't even notice the wavelength okay Okay, so so there's a, there's so so as we as you recall, one of the objects here of, of thinking about where the electron is. So our goal here was to be able to figure out where the electron uh, is in the in the atom. Okay, so 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 um, so we'll say Bohr wanted to know the position of uh, the electron in an atom. Okay. However, there's there's a it turns out that there's a fundamental limitation on how well you can know where something is that's 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 exhibiting quantum properties, something that's very tiny, something that has wave-like properties. Um, and, and a scientist named uh, Werner Heisenberg found there, there is a fundamental limitation to how precisely we can know the position and the momentum of a particle at a given time. So, so found um, there is a uh, fundamental limitation to how uh, precisely we can know um, both the position and momentum of a particle at a given time. So these, these quantum effects that de Broglie was seeing happens with very small things moving very fast, right? And, and that's essentially what's, what's going on here too. So we're going to look at something here. So what I'm going to do is, so, so um, there's a fundamental limit to how precise we can know both the position and the momentum of a particle at a given time. We might write it something like this, delta x, meaning how precisely we know the position, how precisely we know the position of something, times how precisely we know the momentum of something. That has to be equal to less than or equal to something called that. It so happens this is just shorthand for h over 2 pi, Planck's constant over 2 pi. So what we have here actually is this, h over uh, 4 pi. Okay, now keep in mind again, momentum is, uh, is, 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 a, um, is, is made up of the mass of a particle which isn't, isn't changing 
and that's going to be by the the change the the how well we know the momentum is going to be equal to how well we know the velocity right velocity is is essentially so what we're essentially saying is how fast something is moving if we're talking about a specific particle how fast something is moving or and where it's going remember velocity is a vector momentum is a vector so this is telling us where the particle is uh, moving right and how fast it's going and where it is right now okay so so in other words the, the current position and the momentum in other words how fast it's moving and where it's going is it is the fundamental limit to how those two things so the point is is that is that we can't know the path of an electron as it moves around the nucleus it's 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 it's, it's there's a there's a fundamental difference or, or, or problem now now in actuality um, um, th this this the more accurately we, we know one, the less accurately we know the other. So in other words, we could say, okay, um, uh, oh yeah, so, so and, and, and in actuality, if you really look at, and we're not in a particle physics class, we're in a class about chemistry. And, and if you really look at the, the mathematics behind it, it what, 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 what these things are really saying is that the electron is really a combination of all possible places it can be until we look at where it is and then all of a sudden it's in one spot but we don't know where it, the all the possible places it could be are which is a little crazy but um that's this is how, how quantum uh effects manifest themselves all right so what's the what's the the real the real point of this and 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 how this is is that so so we don't know where um we don't know exactly where an electron is or where it's where it's going to be at all and that's one of the real um, real issues and so what what we have is the following to be able to predict where an electron is or what's happening where is an electron around an atom we have something called the schrodinger wave equation And what the Schrodinger wave equation does is it includes the wave nature of an electron, and it has terms for kinetic and potential energy. of the electron. So in other words, what we're, we're so and 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 what we get are are we have solutions for this, which are called wave functions, and they have a they're 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 given by these this term psi this a wave function is psi, and and what this did what these wave functions do is it it dis it describes the allowed energy states of the electron, and these are very similar to those predicted by Bohr, the Bohr model of the atom. But it's it, it it's so so it, it it describes the allowed energy states of the electron um, agrees. With the Bohr model, agrees with those predicted for, for hydrogen, right? It says so. These wave functions, well, the bet is, is it, it, we we know that that from from Heisenberg, we know that we can't say exactly where the electron is. around an atom but what we can do and this is very important we can calculate the probability 
that the electron will be in a certain region of space at a given period of time. Oops. The electron at a given time. And this probability is given by uh, um, by taking the square of this psi, psi squared, the probability is psi squared. So what, what the Schrodinger wave equation does is it takes into account this fact that we have the Heisenberg, what's called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. We, we don't know where an electron is. We don't know where, where, where an electron is. We don't know where it's going, right? Because that's what we, the, the vector of momentum is going to tell us. We don't know where the electron is. We don't know where it's going. What, what the, the, the Schrodinger wave equation sort of does is it says, okay, well, I'm going to balance these two factors. I'm going to balance the fact that I know pretty well where the electron is right now, and I know pretty well where the electron may be, may be going. And so therefore, I know approximately the probabilities that the electron will be in a certain region of space at a given time. Okay. And, and it's these solutions to the, 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 the Schrodinger wave equation It uses it yields a set of wave functions and according and its corresponding set of energies. So so the solution of the wave equation yields this and and allowed wave functions. Are something called orbitals. Here, let me write it nicer. Orbitals, O-R-B-I-T-A-L-S. So instead of having a, 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 an electron in an orbit, what we have are allowed wave functions that tell us the probability of finding an electron in, a, in, an, in an area. And these are called orbitals. Orbitals have a characteristic energy and shape. And what we're going to look at in the next video, the next lecture, is how exactly we can describe these orbitals, what they look like, and so on.